what is the relationship between Chag Aviv, springtime festivals, Chagei Aviv, and Chag Shavuot, the festival of the giving of the Torah? The truth is that one would think there's no connection whatsoever. Pesach is Manchem Tainu. You were freed from Egyptian slavery. That's a magnificent reason for a festival. Shavuot is when we receive the Torah from God on Mount Sinai. Another magnificent reason for a festival. So one would think that that's fine. That's exactly, it's two different festivals, and it should be two different festivals. Fascinatingly, however, the Ramban says that both the festivals are one festival. First of all, united in name by our sages of the Talmud, who call the festival of Shavuot Chakat Seret, which means the closing festival, as if Shavuot actually puts a closing on the days between Pesach and Shavuot, seven weeks, as you know, 50 days. So that, that that's, that's what makes it one festival, as far as the, uh, the Bible is concerned, in those days. And therefore, they are indeed to be seen as one festival. But again, from a logical perspective, it's difficult to understand why. And here, I believe it's very interesting to note that I spoke about the spring festivals, not the singular spring festival. That there's one spring festival, not two, and those two spring festivals are united with the festival of Shavuot that comes seven weeks later. And it would seem that it should be united, but not necessarily, because we do count the days between Pesach and Shavuot. However, conceptually, Pesach is our period of freedom. Shavuot is the period when we receive the Torah. So it's difficult to understand why it's one festival. And let's return to the first issue I made, that there are two spring festivals, not just Pesach. And that's Purim and Pesach together. I say this because we have a principle in Jewish law as soon as you're able to do a mitzvah, you should do it. When there's a leap year, there are two months of Adar. And when there are two months of Adar, within the month of Adar is the festival of Purim. Our logic would dictate, from what our rabbis always taught us, do Purim Adar Ech Rishon, the first Adar. As soon as you have a chance to do it, immediately do it. But no, say our sages, we take your gimel, your dalid, adar, which is the festivals, the two days of the festival of Purim, and we link it to the 14th and 15th days of Nisan, which is Pesach, and we link those two festivals together. And therefore, Purim Pesach is seen as one festival. That's fascinating. And both Purim and Pesach together, therefore, are linked in one inextricable holiday, which goes from Purim until Shavuot. And my question is why? Why did we turn it into one holiday? Purim is Purim, uh, Pesach is Pesach, our 
תפילים, הן שבועות, שבועות, ערמת על תורה, they seem to be separate except for the way that the Bible puts them together with Spirat Omer. What's the logic of putting them together? We must first of all understand as well as we can that Pesach itself is not a complete holiday, far from it. It's called Zman Chirutenu, the time of our freedom. But one thing is inextricably clear. The Jewish people can never be free if we learned anything from Jewish history, that's what we learned, without our homeland, without Eretz Yisrael. Chazal understood that too. And that's why Hazal only for most of the days of Pesach, there are seven days of Pesach, we only recite the complete Hanel on the first day of Pesach. The other days it's half Hanel. Why half Hanel? It cannot be a complete festival unless we have the land of Israel. We cannot be an independent people without the land of Israel. A nation to truly qualify as a nation has to have a moledet, a homeland. First of all, it's the earth of the moledet that gives it nutrition to enable it to live and eat off the land, natural resources from the land. And likewise, very often there is what's called a folkgeist, a spirit to the nation, a function for the nation, a, a goal for and that goal requires a, a homeland. To put it to you very simply, when you're in your homeland, you have your own history. You develop your own culture. You develop your own, own, your own ideals and goals. The ideals and goals for the Jewish people were established in the beginning of Bereshit, chapter 12, God says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. And through you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. And therefore, the goal of the Jewish people, of the people of Israel, is to influence all the nations of the world. For that, we have to be a nation in our own right. For that, we have to have our own history, our own culture, our own literature. You can't get that in the desert. You can't get that when you don't have safe boundaries to protect yourself. You can't get there that as long as you are still in exile. And until Eretz Yisrael, we were still in exile. One more very important point to note. And that is that the two festivals, the festivals of Pesach, the festival of Shavuot, or let me put it differently, the beginning of the festival of Pesach, as I've told you, the festival of Purim, and the festival of Shavuot, those two festivals have Megillot, which are read during the, those festivals, and each of them has a feminine heroine. Megillat Esther, with Esther the queen as the heroine, and Megillat Ruth, Ruth the Moabite, the convert, who is the heroine. It's fascinating. And when we think a little bit about the lives of these heroines, we'll be able to understand also the deep connection between Pun Pesach and Shavuot, that Shavuot is not only Zman Matan Toratenu, it also is Chag Habikurim, it's the festival of the first fruits, it's the festival of the land of Israel and the importance of the land of Israel. And there is no freedom without the land of Israel. 
And Esther will explain this very well in Persia. And we will understand this even better when we understand not only the task that a land has and the job that a land has to do in order to establish the very special destiny of the people who live on it, but we will see very, very clearly from our sources that unless we have a land, we really are not able to continue as Jews altogether, no matter how kind the host country might be to us. Because there may be in, time, in certain times nitzchonot, certain victories for the Jewish people living in the diaspora community. There may be nitzchon, victory, but there will never be nitzchon, nitzchonot, eternity. That we do not have. Continuity we do not have. And we never have. Look for two minutes at Esther in Persia. The Jews did well in Persia in the beginning of the story. Achashverosh makes a big, big party. He has a beautiful, beautiful palace to which he invites all of his important members of his community, of his country, of his empire including the Jews, including the Jews. If you look at the descriptions, Trelet, Chor, Argaman, just like our sanctuary, our holy sanctuary is described, hinting that for the Jews in Persia, the, uh, the emperor's palace was their sanctuary, so to speak. He invites the Jews, as much food, eat and drink, Nowhere does it say that there was an OU Mashkiach to check on the Kashrut. The Jews ate and drank just like the Gentiles ate and drank. It was not kosher. Look too at the names in Persia. Esther, her Hebrew name was Hadassah, a beautiful Hebrew name. Flower. But Astarte, Esther, is Astarte, the goddess of beauty, the Greek god. Marduk, Mordechai, the god of war. They had absolutely pagan names. And when there's a beauty contest, and I was already, I'm, I'm ashamed to tell you, a graduate rabbi, when I realized it was a nighttime beauty all the years I thought it was a daytime beauty contest, but no, it was nighttime beauty contest. And Esther goes and joins in the contest and becomes the wife to Achashverosh. In the marriage, the Jews are respected. But what kind of Jews have they become? And what kind of Jews are they really? Now let's look at the festival of the giving of the Torah. Without Eretz Yisrael and the zeitgeist of Eretz Yisrael and the history of our, of our motherland, the Jews can't make it in Galut and will never make it in Galut. Eretz Yisrael, the festival of the first fruits, we are in Eretz Yisrael. It's a whole different story. In Eretz Yisrael, unlike previously, Esther, the Jewess, who became a Gentile in the Galut, the fact is that Ruth, who was the Moabite, becomes Jewish in Eretz Yisrael. Falls in love with her mother in law Naomi. really, really says 
she wants to become Jewish and follow Naomi to where it's Israel, with the words of Giur implanted clearly, Amech Ami Velokayech Elokai. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Beginning with your people will be my people. It has to be a Jewish nation. And from the Jewish nation, the culture of Judaism, and the goal of Judaism to teach the entire world the message of Judaism. You know, a fascinating question is asked by the Midrash of Ishmael. He says, why is it that the Torah was given in a parousia, in a desert, in a no man's land, and not in Mount Moriah in Israel, which would have been a much better place? The answer is a fascinating answer. Had the Torah been given in Mount Moriah, Midrash to Rabbi Yishmael says, then the Jews would say to the Gentiles, you have no place in the Torah. However, God wanted the Torah to be for the entire world. God understood, first of all, that he loves all of humanity because all of humanity is created in his divine image. And we understand after Corona that we're living in a global village. We're all bound up with the other. And if there are any nations were out to destroy the weak, then the Jewish people can also be destroyed as well. There will only be peace when we succeed in teaching the world, which is our task. Through you, the Jews, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So in Israel, the Gentiles become Jews, and we have to welcome them do everything we can to make them feel comfortable amongst us. And that's what Isaiah in chapter 2, that's what he prophesies. The end of the days, when the Jews are secure in their land, all of the Gentiles will rush up to them. Come up to the mountain of God, learn the Jews will learn from, the Gentiles will learn from the Jewish ways. The Gentiles will walk in the Jewish paths. For from Zion shall come forth Torah and the word of God from Jerusalem to the entire world. That's the task of the Jews living in their state of Israel. Chag